So, uh, before I, bef so uh, before I conclude, I just want to mention on um, uh, uh, how we decided to build our models, especially for compliance surveillance. So we follow uh, this paper from Federal Reserve Bank called SR117. For those of you who have read it, uh, brilliant paper. For those of you who have not read it, please read it. Uh, really a must. Uh, and why? So number one, paper was written in 2011. And regulators are very creative when they name their papers. Uh, SR stands for Supervision Regulation, 11 stands for 2011, uh, and 7 is not July. It happens to be seventh paper in sequence that they sent out to the regulated entities. It's very counterintuitive. Uh, uh, and uh, the reason we like this is because it was written in 2011. It predates AI. And because it predates AI, this thing has been rolled out across all the banks. Everybody is super familiar with SR117 in the model validation team. So if you then go to them and say, uh, whenever, whoever is trying to adopt AI, this is the framework that you need to use to adopt AI in a financial services institution. Why? Well, it's considered to be a gold standard for any type of model, including artificial intelligence, because AI is a statistical model in the end, right? We're just deleting words and trying to fill which words got deleted. And it has three pillars. And these pillars are really simple, easy to understand and easy to apply. Anytime you talk to a vendor who sells AI to you or a every time your team is developing AI solutions, uh, ask them these three questions. First thing, conceptual soundness. Can you explain to me in plain English how this model works? Uh, hopefully, on the back of what we've just done today, you should be able to explain how the model was trained, what is a foundation, you should be able to explain the purple box, like what's, uh, how is it able to generate alerts, the dimensions. Like there's a lot of material here that we covered, but hopefully it's not a mystery anymore. Uh, and hopefully you're not gonna walk away saying that it's a black box, we have no idea what's inside it. The second one is called outcomes analysis. So this is when you put in uh, a question into the model or you put in a true positive into the model and they wait for the response. Uh, we've done that actually in the first section of the presentation when we put in ping me on WhatsApp and we waited for it to explain back to us. So every time you put in that sentence, you're expecting for the model to generate some kind of response. The goal is for the model to generate accurate results, the kind of results that you would say like, yeah, th this is actually correct. And uh, what you want to do is do a lot of that testing. So ultimately with artificial intelligence, and this is what I was saying, unfortunately, unfortunately, AI is not possible for me to tell you what's the boundary of its capabilities. You have to discover it. The only way for you to discover it is to run outcomes analysis. For, you, for those of you who are customers and who have done outcomes analysis and testing, you know that like some of the sentences uh, that you plant into your communications data are gonna get caught. Some are gonna get missed and it's normal. Uh, the ones that you miss, you need to put it into the feedback loop and then continue to retrain the model. Uh, but this uh, part of outcomes analysis is really critical before you roll out anything, be it GPT-4, be it Copilot, or be it Behavorx. Number three is really damning on GPT-4, okay? It's ongoing monitoring and change management. As a financial institution, the Federal Reserve, if you're a bank, the Federal Reserve expects that the models that you're using in production are under your control. Uh, not on, under OpenAI's control, not under Microsoft's control. Copilot, actually, in most of your organizations, has been risk accepted. I'm not sure for how long. Uh, if I was fed, I would definitely have a problem with this. Why? Number one, you have no idea how it was built. Number two, outcomes analysis was not performed. Uh, and the third one is the most uh, uh, damning one change management and uh, control of the changes. Meaning, when Microsoft rolls out a new model, they cannot change the old model in your environment without you saying so. And if you say no, they have to maintain the old version of the model forever, until such time when you say yes. Uh, that's the requirement from the Federal Reserve and that's what they view as the gold standard in model validation. Unfortunately, OpenAI only gives you three months before they pull the rug under your feet. Uh, same applies to uh, Microsoft, so uh, that's part of the reason why we don't uh, do AI with third parties. Uh, we have to do it ourselves because our customers demand that Behavox LLM is under their control. So I'll stop here to see if you have any, uh, any questions, and we have these uh, 
I guess, uh, boxes that Farine is going to throw at you if you, have, uh, if you have a question. She says she's very accurate. I'm not sure about it. <laughs>